that. They're just watching. They're just uh. watching for you. <laughs> yeah, that's the Yuhua Hamasaki. Are we starting? Yeah. We're Soon. almost starting. He will let you. He'll be like, Buenos dias. Our guest, our guest today is all the way from Guangdong, China. Oh my God! Yes, I am all the way from China, baby. Here I am. Is that a big dong, Guangdong? Well, I don't know, but you want to see my dong? <laughs> sure. <I> mean, <laughs> oh, <dig it. laughs> I have a pussy. Please this don't look. I have a story. pussy. I'm a woman. How do I pronounce your name? Because I noticed RuPaul pronounces it one way, and you do it another. Yuhua. Yuhua. With an H. Yuhua. Yuhua Hamasaki. Hamasaki. Yes, yes, and, yes. And this is actually the name your parents gave you, just like RuPaul did. Yes, it was my legal name because when I started drag, um, I was just going to the clubs. I didn't think I was going to continue continue doing drag. Yeah. So I just kept that name, Yuhua, because everybody was calling me Yuhua at the time. And and so did you ever feel any pressure to come up with a different name? Or? No, because it is... No, you were like, is, this is you. Because it is me. Yeah. You know, I have to love myself, right? It I thought me. it was a pun at first. I was like, Yuhua, Yuhua. Like, I thought it was sounding like a New York person, like calling you a whore. Uh, calling me a whore? <laughs> I am a whore. And, and John and Sophia on the first ep- uh, episode said, uh, you whore? Like, you haul? Like, the, the, the girl that drives your, uh, your furniture while you're moving? Did That's she think she you were a lesbian or something? Is I don't you know? know. I'm very androgynous. <laughs> Uh, you, know, you just happen to be a beautiful woman. Yes, I am. Most yes, I of am. the time. Yes, I am. And then, you know, just a, a, a mortal among humans on yes. Earth. Yes, I'm like, what do you call it? Harry Potter. Oh, really? You, yeah. What's your secret magic power? Um, I can make men love me, just mm-hmm. like I'm doing right now to you guys. Mm-hmm. To You're very lovable. Guys. I feel it. Yeah. Do, do you feel it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's putting in you right now. It's going in you. <laughs> I feel it. Spoil alert. Yes. I was so heartbroken because I loved the way you were talking and your personality in the interviews. Oh, thank you. And I was like, oh, she's going to be top five easily. And, you know, and, and when we've seen yeah, you in the five, press, probably. <laughs> you, you know, you really shine as, as a very intelligent, very funny, very cray. What is it you describe yourself as sassy and gay, but don't worry, she's also cray cray. Yes, yes, yes. And I think that's what most people really are. You know, when, when you are, when you try to, to be yourself, people think mm-hmm. you're crazy, but in, in fact, you're actually just speaking out the truth. Amen. You know, right? And so you got eliminated, and everybody yes. now is going like, as if you were in a terrible car accident. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm fine, girl. People keep asking me, "How are you doing? How are you feeling? <laughs> are you okay? Are you sad? Anything I can do for you?" I'm like, "I'm fine, girl. Life goes on. It really does." And you know, this is just the beginning. I can look at it as a bad thing, like I got eliminated on national television, or I can look at the bright side and say, "Hey, uh, my success." It's not determined by my elimination on the show. It is actually by the amount of hard work that I want to put in after the show, knowing that I'm given this amazing opportunity in this day and age. You, you, know? you forgot to clap while you say that. I am not that kind of girl. <laughs> because I am that Getting on the show is winning. I mean... It's... Exactly, because out of thousands <laughs> and thousands of girls... We were the lucky 14 to be chosen. Yeah. On season 10. On season, season of 10. the X. Season X. We call ourselves season rated X because we're all just horny men. <laughs> <laughs> Who's season... the biggest slut on the show Not off me. the screen? Not me. I think there's yeah. some. Um, there's Calorie. Yeah. There's Eureka. There's Mayhem. There's... Oh, Eureka's a vacuum cleaner. Oh, yes, girl. You should see her mouth, girl. You can see what that <laughs> mouth can do. She doesn't eat just food. <laughs> no. She sucks up everything. Every last oh, drop. Wow. wow. You know, I, I I like the the little Broadway queen um, Blair Sinclair. Blair Sinclair, love her. She's really cute. She has what a howdy kind of doody kind of. What know. kind of whore she is? She yeah. yeah. What kind of whore is she? <laughs> <laughs> a very a very very subtle young whore, I would say. <laughs> now you uh, your family moved from Guangdong, China, when you were eight years old. When I was seven years seven old. Seven years old. Seven years old. And when we first moved here, I had a culture shock because I it was my first time seeing people that were different from me. Okay. And when we landed at JFK, that's when it hit me, oh, we're at a different uh, country. And that was the first time I ever saw snow looking out the, the window. It was October 1997. Were you happy when you saw the snow? I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> what the fuck is that? What's going on? Because I'm from Puerto Rico, and the first, and I always associated snow with Christmas. Yes. So when Puerto, Rico see, Puerto Ricans see snow for the very first time, we get so excited. We're like, this is magic. This is Santa Claus is about to show up. Uh, when I, what we associate snow is with cold, not Christmas, like bad weather, something bad's coming. Like, that's what we associate snow with, like cold weather. Oh, death. 
yeah. Like winter is coming on like winter you know, is coming, Game like, of Thrones. Yeah, like we have to like go hide or something. So was it was it a, did your family regret initially uh, the move to New York? No, not at all because they moved here for us, you know, for us to have a better life. So I don't think they have any regrets unless they don't really love us. <laughs> right? Well, and, and your your family uh, has been very embracing of your job as a drag queen. My story is, is very similar to Kim Chi's. Um, okay, they're in denial. They still don't know. No, they don't know. They kind of know, but they're in denial. I think Kim Chi's more uh, severe, where they don't know anything. Right. But mine knows some stuff, but they just in denial. They don't talk about it. Is Kim Chi has she come out to her mother yet? I don't think not, so, girl. Not that I'm aware that of. is outrageous because it's like she's in the news all the time. Yeah, but you know, it, it, you know, her mother is an immigrant person that uh, I don't think even really speaks English, or she speaks like restaurant English because she works in a Korean restaurant. And so you can kind of, like, when you're living in a different co- country and a different culture, you can only be tuned into the things you want to be tuned into. She and probably just watches Korean television. And and the different country like, she lives in is in the suburbs of Chicago. Well, no, her, I think her mother's in Michigan, too. <laughs> oh, so Michigan. that's another thing. Look her her mother's in Michigan? <laughs> yeah. I believe her mother's in Michigan. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And also, the thing is, Asian culture is that we're so excluded from everything like even even when we live in in america there's yeah. always chinatown or koreatown you know what i mean mm-hmm. so when we're living in america we go yeah we they go to work and then they come back home and then they watch their um soap operas that's mm. that's chinese soap operas or mm. korean soap operas right. and then they go to sleep they don't watch regular tv now you grew up watching chinese soap operas i did how did you know i read your press release oh, bitch. oh wow oh oh, oh 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 yes i did I i'm did. a journalist oh okay yes i did i love them yeah yeah because well, they're interesting because you know i think in the united states historically we haven't had like a lot of the historical soap operas but i think we're getting some of them more nowadays but you so because the, the thing I'm, uh, tell the audience what soap operas are like in china very dramatic, yeah. like telenovelas, like mm-hmm. very dramatic. Um, sometimes it doesn't even make sense, but you find it entertaining because it's so dramatic. Mm-hmm. You know, the costumes are are very, very grand. Mm-hmm. Um, the acting is very, very grand. And the whole production value of it is just very, very big. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so I yeah, it's interesting to see because uh, like when I stopped in China, where I was trying to where watch, did you go? I went to Hong Kong. Um, oh. I spent uh, about two weeks there, and we also did a trip to like Macau and to Guangzhou. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. That's so, where I was born. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, the great food. I have yes, to say, yes, you know? yes, yes. Um, and so it was we were watching one of these t- television shows, and of course it was in Chinese, so we didn't know what was going on, but we were just like. These people have all the feels. <laughs> yeah, they're like, ah! 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 Yes. All, all types that of... inspire your drag? Yes, I would say yeah. so, especially in the ancient um, soap opera, the way they dress. Mm-hmm. It's the costumes. It's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. The colors. Uh, like I said, it's very dramatic, very grand, and a very mm-hmm. glorified version of it. Mm-hmm. So you... how, how did you get into drag? How did I dip into drag, or how yeah, do I get into drag how, every time? How did time? you get into drag, like, in the beginning? In the beginning? Well... It's a very long story, and I have to tell every time, but um, growing up, like, every LGBT person, you were bullied, you were made fun of, you know, you didn't fit in. So while growing up, I would try to be very um, hidden, very low profile, so I would try to be, like, in the corner, not trying to have any fun. So when I started doing drag, that's when I felt like, oh my god, I'm finally feeling expressive. I'm finally having fun. I'm finally grasping back all those years that it didn't get to be myself. Mm -hmm. So I started going to the clubs at 16 to gay bars because that was the only way and only place and environment that I felt like I didn't feel like I was judged. That I feel like I wasn't being criticized and that I could just be myself and let go and be free. And the only way to get into a gay bar, as we all know, is to dress and drag, use a fake ID and get in. That's what I was doing. And it just went along from there. So you had a you just had a, a fake idea. Now was it your real name and stuff? Was it a different thing, or was it somebody I had, else's I, identity? I had so many IDs. Um, okay. There were because <laughs> I kept getting clipped. You're like, this ID is no good anymore. Yeah, um, th- this McLovin. I, I've I've used uh, I've used IDs of different people before. Mm-hmm. They're real IDs. Um, I just buy off of them, and then mm-hmm. they claim it that it's lost, mm-hmm. and then. There are other IDs where I just photocopy it and then just, and then just change the year on <laughs> my uh, ID. Yeah, it's amazing how many uh, people start drag at such a young age because like yeah. if you want to get into a bar, it's the fastest way is just slip on a dress and put on some makeup and they, it wasn't, they accept it, you. It wasn't even for me. It wasn't yeah. even about drinking or partying. It was just more about being accepted and 
and and, and expressing being, yourself creatively. Y- not even th- no. Not even th- that too, but also just expressing myself authentically, one hundred percent, without judgment. Mm-hmm. May I ask you what yes. your gender identity is? Gender fluid, gender neutral. Okay. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you. Do you have preferred pronouns? Doesn't matter. He, she, it, shit. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't your, matter. Your gender, your preferred pronoun, I think one of the queens was saying is, uh, Miss Vanjie, Miss Vanjie. Miss Vanjie. Are you surprised how that's just kind of taken over the gay world, uh, Miss Vanjie? You never know. That's the yeah. thing with memes and trends and social media is that something so little and so small that you don't expect it to be so trendy all of a sudden, it becomes so trendy because just because of social media, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of feel like VH1 kind of spoon-fed us that one a little bit. How? Well, because, you know, we, she, she said it, and then Michelle Visage whispers it into, into RuPaul's ear. And then on this latest episode of, was it on uh, the, this latest episode, they refer back to Miss yeah. Vanjie. So yeah. it's like they, they, they kind of knew what would catch fire. Yeah. Because it was such a weird moment. I <laughs> thought when, when she said it, I thought she had problem remembering her own name and saying it because she was so shocked that she got eliminated. <laughs> that she was saying, Miss Vanessa. And, and, then and then I said to her saying for the second time I was like oh she fucked up again and the third time she still fucked up I was like okay I, I, she's, she's very very nervous and she's very very shook that she got eliminated uh-huh. that she said her name three times incorrectly mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so so uh, why the Japanese name? Hamasaki Hamasaki comes from the Japanese pop singer Ayumi Hamasaki okay. and she's like the Madonna of the Asian world and Hamasaki when you say it it just sounds really Cutthroat, fierce, Yuha Hamasaki. You know, and I want to keep that name Yuha Hamasaki as Asian so that when people hear the name Yuha Hamasaki, they know that it is an Asian drag queen and that. What, what do uh, Chinese people think of Japanese people or vice versa? Um, there's, there's been some history behind it, but I think that's yeah. past generations that, um... But- it's not like, a, like, Americans think about the British, or is that, is that different? Like, you know, is there, is that an animosity, or do they think, like, you know, Japanese people are sophisticated, or, you know... I don't I, know, that's why I'm kind of curious. I, oh, before know. there was the war. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if, uh, sure. if you remember it. Which one? <laughs> uh, World, <laughs> World War II. World War II, yeah, okay, World yeah. War II. So there was some animosity yeah. uh, uh, among the two countries. But I think that's past generations. So for me, it doesn't it doesn't. So linger. to be Asian in, in this modern world we live in is is to be pan-Asian. It's to sort of embrace all the different cultures. Korean, Japanese, Thai, yes, yes. Indonesian, yes. everything. And in, so in that certainly influences you as as a performer yes so a lot of my costumes um i i don't only just wear chinese i wear japanese i wear thai i wear korean i wear a bunch of stuff so uh, but a lot of times um, americans don't realize that they're different for example i wore a, a red kimono for the anxious look for the week for week one and then somebody said why are you wearing a red kimono again uh for your premiere uh for your um red carpet look but i'm like that's a that's from China, that's a Cheng Sam. Weren't you, you know worried I mean? that you are going to have the kimono curse with the Madonna <laughs> challenge? No, because I'm actually Asian myself. <laughs> and that's just good luck. Yeah, exactly. You a good quality kimono, I'm you know? sure. But not Asians like, like love that looks things. Like a Victoria's Secret. Right yeah, now. a lot of them are wearing Victoria's Secret. Asians love everything that's good luck. What is it? It's like you ask somebody, it's like, what is, why do you have that cat waving at you, cl- that claw? It's good luck. It's for yeah. good luck. And why oh. is it red? Why do you have a turtle outside of your house? Good luck. It's good luck. Why do you have a horse sitting outside? Good luck. She brings babies. You know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for good luck for yourself, as a queen? Um. Nothing really. Maybe that's why you got eliminated in the third episode. <laughs> yeah, that is true. I guess I don't, I don't do anything really. I but mean, are you a religious person? No, or faith? no. That's why I'm not religious at all. Yeah. So you're like action, not faith. Yeah, I, I believe it. If you if you want yeah. something, go for it. You know, uh, your life is in your own hands. It's it's in your own hands. Make the most out of it. That's what I believe in. And your family originally moved to Brooklyn, but then you guys moved to uh, Chinatown. Chinatown, and, yes. And so a lot of drag queens that I know, they go to Chinatown to shop for their drag. But you just what do they the, buy? Anything they can, because there's all sorts of like really great costumes and you know ch- chachkis, fans especially fans. Jams. Yeah, everybody's like that's where the, the that's where I got my first fan. For, yeah, yeah, for fans the Asian especially. stores in Chicago, you know, and kimonos for their <laughs> for season eight, you know. And uh, you're a big admirer of Laverne Cox, who got her start at Lucky Chang's. Yes. Yeah. What's your, what's your, do you guys know each other? Or? Yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 we do, actually. Um, 
Uh, she worked there in until 2012, until Orange is the New Black um, came out. And she's like, bye, I'm going to go. Like, see you later, I'm going to be a big superstar. And, you know. I'm going to be a star. Yeah. So we. And then you never heard from her again. I saw her <laughs> at a diner. And she's like, I'm sorry, who are you? No, she remembers me. She, <laughs> she, remember me. <laughs> she remembers me. She said, at a diner maybe three years ago, she said, hey. And that was it. It Do was you like, want my hey. Autograph? hey. No. It's really fascinating the times we live in because it's like before Laverne Cox, there really wasn't a lot of public figures in entertainment that were uh, trans. That, there was Candace Kane. That was about it. Yeah. You know? And now we just have so many people. It's, yeah. and, and I think Laverne was kind of very instrumental at opening those doors. Yes, exactly. I think she was also the yeah. first uh, uh, colored trans woman to be on the cover of Time Out um, New York. Time Out and Time Magazine. And Time Magazine. Yeah. You know, from Time Out to Time, honey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you know, You've been eliminated, um, and so so I'm sure a lot of your friends are like, "What are you going to do with the hundred thousand dollars?" But this this year, you're going to be making at least a hundred thousand dollars. What are you going to do with that money? <laughs> what are some of your dreams that you're going to pursue? Like save it, invest in it, and put it back in my drag. I'm not going to s- spend it lavishly and stupidly. Well, you put it into your new video, uh, your. The Ankh song. Yes. Featuring DJ Mitch Farino. Yes, yes, yes. He was also the one that um, did Bob's uh, Purse First. Awesome. That's yeah, why you did first. Ankh First in the video. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so I won't get sued for it. <laughs> so I won't get sued for it. So if, so if you want to sue me, I'm like, girl, you're a part of this production too. You know? Where, where'd you find all those children? Of, the, the premise for if people who haven't seen the video is you're kind of like wrapped up in your caution tape, Ankh dress. It was the video, the whole video itself, it was just a spoof. It was just a. Old MacDonald had a farm. Yeah, and also thing, the yeah. fact that uh, I'm trying to brainwash people to 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 wear an onk. But the thing yeah. is, I'm just this is a fun mini project. I'm not trying to be Beyonce or anything with this project. You know what I mean? Just for fun, for fun, <laughs> fun, 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 fun. Where'd you get stupid. these kids? Oh, the kids. Um, we had a production company that set sets up everything, and they found the kids. So, so you imagine that the parents are coming in. They're oh, like, the parents are there too. Yeah, and they're like, "Honey, just pretend like you're into this drag queen." Yes, they did. They did. They they, did. they, <laughs> they, um, did they, they have ha- to explain they, what was going on. Um, no, the are. kids were were they very know. very smart. Actually, okay. um, they were very smart, very intelligent, and very quick too. Oh. I would say very open minded as well. You know, who was who was the kid who you felt like was was a born star? They were all amazing. They were all really they good. They were all amazing, you know. Okay. Uh, there was one part where I, where I pushed the girl and she re- she pushed me back. I thought that was very funny, you know. You know, just I always like it when drag queens get to work with children, you yeah. know. I think of like Jinx Monsoon in in that video uh Creep. Creep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then she has a bunch of little schoolgirls and they're all like Giving her the like, <laughs> they're like other drag queens on Drag Doesn't Race. She mow them down or something, or blow them up at the end. I don't. <laughs> I think she kills them all. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like she kills children. I was like, what a wholesome video. Because I think what happens when you put drag queens and children is that you, it shows diversity. How how mm. how children are so open and accepting yeah. to someone that's so different from them, even though society mm-hmm. and and the media tells them that it is not okay. But, I think that what makes it so so. So good to see. Mm-hmm. But kids like drag queens can be really mean. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, kids. It's like, you know, a lot of people describe their high school years or their elementary school years as prison. You know, it's like, and drag, it's certainly we watch RuPaul's Drag Race and you guys are, you know, like girls. Like you guys are in prison. <laughs> you got, we're going to have to put a restraining order between the Vixen yeah. and Aquaria. I mean, shoot. Yeah. Now you were there when it all went down. I was not. I you was weren't. being. Uh, I was being uh, judged on the main stage uh, okay. with other girls that were in the tops and the bottom. Mm-hmm. So while that was happening, I was not there. Until... Were you aware of the 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 tension, the friction between? I know the two there were uh, tensions between the first and second week, but I didn't know how mm-hmm. much it escalated on the third week because once I got back from being judged on the main stage, I went back. Um, to the Untucked Lounge, and then I just started going through the lyrics and movements and dance moves of what I need to prepare to lip sync for my life because I don't want to worry about them, what fight they're having. They can kill themselves for each for all I care, <laughs> slap each other for all I care. I'm worried about myself at that point. Because Well, you were there for the initial fight, though, before the spider arrived. I was doing my makeup. Yeah, I, but I, you weren't I was, really paying attention to No, me, half the room were, were on this side, <laughs> the other half was the other side, so I don't know what was going on. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it's interesting. A lot of people are just like, you know, they're coming for the vixen or they're supporting her in that kind of sense. So it, it's interesting to see who who's supporting her and who's like really being like, mm-hmm. she's a total bitch. Mm-hmm. And we should probably do a whole podcast about what the issues that the vixen has brought yeah. up because they really deserve a long discussion about it. Uh, yeah. And, but, and you that, know, from if people are people, are, a lot of people are like, you know, because we did the cooking with drag queens with the vixen. Right. And um, and people are like, what do you guys have to say about it? Because Vixen uh, gave us a lot of friction on the show, and um, and, and she e- hadn't previously, which was really strange. Like there was in real life, or in, in real life, in she, real life. Vixen is a was a very close friend of ours, and and we know Vixen very well. We filmed in her home, and we followed Vixen mm-hmm. around for months with a video camera, and um, it, you know it felt. Dis- I was disappointed the way she behaved on the film, the cooking part. She was very combative and, and you that know was the only part that she was combative about it was the weird it was so weird to us it was it was what, hard for what me to part understand. like when we cooked in the kitchen because you know when we do cooking with drag queens it's you know we follow them around to the clubs we videotape them we do a talking head we interview them she'd been on the podcast like seven times you know and so and then when it came to the cooking part she was just like i'm gonna be a bitch and we're like please don't be a bitch that's not what we're about and she's like no i'm gonna be a bitch and so our editor did the best she could and you know to tone to, that down to tone that down but it still came through and i just I, I you know it's disappointing to me but uh you know she has battles that she's fighting that i will never understand and you know we love the vixen and we're very proud of her standing up for herself and calling out the racist optics mm-hmm. that the show in a way that actually gets brought up on the air mm-hmm. and she's also a muckraker she's someone who jumps into a fight just for the sake of getting attention so for us in Chicago in the scene who have been in a situation where she was unkind to us or we got into a legitimate quarrel with her, um, we feel at this time, some people, that she's crying wolf. But the problem with crying wolf is the real wolf sometimes shows up. Mm-hmm. And the wolf of racism is real and we have to forgive Vixen and understand where she's coming at because ultimately we want to fight to get people to vote. We want to fight to make the world a better place. And with, you know, all this enough, the enough movement, the the, uh, Parkland school shooting movement is great. But if you look at the statistics, the analytics of young people who watch RuPaul's Drag Race, who are involved in these movements, they're not going out to vote. And it's a a big problem that we have. You know, we're very politically conscious as a young generation. But at the same time, we're we're not not... doing anything to make the difference. We sit at home and complain and say, oh, uh, I'm not going to do it because somebody else is going to do it. But the thing is, if you don't do it, nobody else is going to do it. Like I said, your life is in your own hands. And what do you have to say about, like, because you watched the episode and you've seen Untucked. What what was your reaction to seeing the Vixen and Aquarius discussion? To, to be honest again, yeah. I, I, my mind wasn't even there because I know even, yeah. I was going to be eliminated at yeah. that episode. So the entire time, I, I watched it at Roscoe's with Dusty, Ray Bottoms, and Trinica Rex. I was sitting in the middle. The entire time, I was just staring at the screen, but I was just thinking in my head, how are they going to show me <laughs> getting eliminated? <laughs> you, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like and, how and, are they going to eliminate how me? Do you feel, how do you feel your elimination went? Do you feel like... It was, do you feel okay? I, I mean, feel fine, yeah, yeah. I feel fine. It was just... Were you surprised by anything that you saw on the screen? No, because... I know what I did. Mm-hmm. I know what I said. I know what was said to me. So it wasn't a surprise. I remembered mm-hmm. it. So it wasn't a surprise. I was just wondering how it's gonna look on screen in person, watching from a from a from a a third person's point of view. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Watching myself. Mm. And so, what do you feel like was the Brandon Branton wants to know what was your most challenging moment between filming an episode and when it finally airs? Um, it's the challenge is. Before announcement was keeping a secret because hmm. everybody's asking, are you on? Are you on? Are you on? Are, are you, you on? Are you on? Yes. <laughs> are you on? Are you on? Are you on? Are you on? And you can't say anything. Yeah. And after uh, the announcement, uh, the, or each episode, the, the, the hard part, the difficult part was um, sleep, I would say. Oh, just sleep. winding down for the end of the day. Because you're, you're filming throughout the day and the, at the end of the day, they have you comment on what took place that day. And that's uh, and they have you wear the same outfit so for to have consistency. Oh, we can't talk about that. Yeah. Oops. We can't talk about it. Sorry, but I thought that was early in the morning. Yes, we're up. Or, we, we have we have long days. Yeah, you know yeah. we have long days. Mm-hmm. You know it's it's long, a lot of hard work, but it's very rewarding at the same time. You know, one thing that a lot of the contestants, uh, I guess, got into trouble for talking about in, in the past seasons were that they would get checkout notices in their <laughs> hotel rooms. 
and I they stop do doing that after season four. I think they what happened? Oh. They would tell so them they're they going knew, home before they sent them they home. They would get from the oh, hotel yes. they were staying. I think yeah. a little note saying, "Here's your checkout date and yes. all this stuff," and they'd be like, "Why am I getting this checkout yeah, date?" Yeah, exactly. And then they go home. Exactly. I've heard that. I've <laughs> heard those stories. Maybe I'm first is the one who kind of just uh, she spilled the beans on that. She spilled the beans out there, and then other people chimed in and be like, "Yeah, that's yeah. true." But were you surprised uh, when you got eliminated? Do you feel like it was a, a, a an unexpected departure for you? I think everybody can say that they don't expect themselves to go home so early or sure. going home at all, you know. But you never know what they're looking for because it is mm-hmm. a TV show produced by a group of people, not sure, not by whole of America, mm-hmm. you know. And you certainly you know, had a snatch game character ready to go. Yes. What was it going to be? I had several actually. I had um, Jackie Chan on mine, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Jackie Chan, Christina Aguilera, and also Lois Griffin from Family Guy. <laughs> Hi, it? Pina. <laughs> you can't do Stewie. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you can't. You have to do real people. You have to do real yeah, people. but we had to bring yeah. in uh, several options. Yeah. So. Oh, that's that's right. that's, oh, too bad but we you can get do to see real that. people even though they like play a character, right? So yeah. You just do like you know the person that the narrates person, and then Lo- like, Lo- like Maggie Griffin. Smith, like one Ben did Maggie Smith, he did it as the you know as the Duchess or the yeah. Dowager Countess. What was, what was it called? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Dusty, Dan something. Dusty Ray Bottoms, you're touring with her. You're you're here in uh, Chicago at, Chica- yes, at with Roscoe's. Her. Yes. And um, Dusty Ray Bottoms had a really like tough time with her family. Uh, they tried to take her into an exorcist. Yes, she told me that for the first time ever two years ago. We worked at a bar uh, called Pieces in New York City, and she told me that in the dressing room. And I was shocked when she was told me that story mm-hmm. because I didn't know how severe some people take it that they would have an exorcist come to their own home to their child and have them open their mouth and perform open this, their mouth open her mouth like to take to the, the demon out. demon and evil out of her which it, was yeah. which was the gay stuff cuz they go know? the demons go in through your holes Oh. Any of your holes. <laughs> holes. Okay, just don't keep those holes. Shit. Up. That's why your anus slaps shut after you're done pooping so that the demons don't go in there. Is that really what the uh, religious? They just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? Is that a thing that yeah, people believe? That's why God designed the anus to close and your mouth to close, so demons don't go in there. Oh wow! <laughs> but I eat a lot. <laughs> Christopher Michael Ramos says, "Do you believe, like other queens have stated, that Rue and the producers look through all of your drag and decide if you're worth keeping?" Hi, Christopher. Um, say, th- say that question again. Uh, do you believe, like other queens have stated, that RuPaul and the producers look through all your drag and decide if you're worth keeping? What do you mean, look through while they we're look not there? They outfits and be like, is this, can, will this be good for uh, episode five? Will this be good for episode six? Will this be good for episode seven? I don't know. I don't think they have the time for that. Yeah. Because once we all leave at the mm-hmm. same time, we all mm-hmm. arrive at the same time. Yeah. So I don't think they have the time for that unless while you're we sleeping, leave and they're then, going through unless your stuff. we leave and then they come back in. I, I don't think because they shut the gate and everything, mm-hmm. you know. And and so your your when your time in the hotel room is very much time to decompress. But you're just like so caught up in what happened and how you're thinking and how this is going to affect your life. That's really hard to just get a good night's sleep. Not even that. I'm not even thinking about my life actually. Uh-huh. That when when I'm back at the hotel room, I'm thinking about oh my god. I just had a very long day. All right, how do I prepare for tomorrow? That's what I'm thinking about, which is something that I should not do, knowing if I knew that that was going to happen, I should just go back to the hotel room, forget everything, get a good night's sleep, and worry about it tomorrow. That's how I should have done it. Well, so that that's, seems to be a common trope with a lot of drag queens, is that they try to be um, a Jacqueline of all trades. They try to put everything in the kitchen sink into their costumes and their performances and a lot of common criticisms that the judges I've seen tell them to do is, uh, which is a similar thing that um, a fashion person says. Uh, I think it was um, take, you know, when you're done with your look, take one thing off and then you're done. Who was that, Mark? Was that Anna Winter? Who said uh, um, it was, it was, was the guy Coco from Chanel. Chanel, wasn't it? Coco Chanel, yeah, Coco yes. Chanel. And it feels like you know editing is a is a is a skill that would benefit a lot of drag queens. Because we try to be perfectionists, yeah. you know what I mean. We try to do this. We try to do the most when we're in drag. We try to do the most because you want to be as stand out as possible. You want to be as dramatic as possible. So with that mentality in mind, you're trying to do the most without even thinking about editing. I think that's the problem where it lays. 
And so that, like, I, I think about like a show like Mimi on First one time I saw that she did where she just had, it looked like a yard sale on the stage. <laughs> what was she doing? She just would travel like with six or seven uh, suitcases. And she had just, them all on the stage? And she just had tons of props. props. props it was, props, props, props. And, and to me, I was like, a part of me, I was really fascinated by it because she literally, like, <laughs> if she, you know, had a scene where she's uh, drinking a cocktail, she would have a cocktail and she had a burger and she had a, a, a kitchen sink and she had a fan and she had a puppets and With she had bowling pins a bowling and pin and, <laughs> and Did it work a rubber out chicken. Well? I think it was an interesting performance and certainly, like, you know, in, in their in the early '90s, it was very similar a lot to what a lot of artists either they they went completely naked, they took all their clothes off, and so there was them naked in front of an audience telling their life story. Like I think about Tim Miller, or Holly Hughes, or it was the polar opposite, which a lot of drag queens were doing, and they would just bring everything in the kitchen sink onto the stage with them. Yeah. And so it's always difficult to strike that balance as an artist. Is like, how much do you actually bring into your act, you know, versus like just having faith that we're going to enjoy the show just because we love you. Yeah. And you don't need to, you know, some people just discover like, uh, I think uh, Milan discovered this. It's like, you know, I'm just maybe drag isn't necessarily the path that I want to take. I just want to be a. Musician, I want to be a performer. Yeah, and she's doing fabulous right now. How how do you see yourself like uh, going in this direction so far? Like, do you feel like uh, you're you're gonna get more elaborate, or you're gonna simplify, or how how is this gonna elaborate my drag, or do you mean my yeah, with just the way your that artistry? Look, or... Yeah, like, how, do you feel like uh, you're having a tendency to you know make things more elaborate? Like, do you know multimedia performances? Like, I'm thinking about Todrick Hall. Like, he brings everybody in town into his videos, and it turns into a multimedia spectacle. And then there's somebody, other artists who... Like Sia. Sia, yeah, who's just literally standing on stage, not moving, one single camera, one single shot. Um, depends what I'm doing, I would say. If it's... If it's... If it's um, mm-hmm. I thought you were trying to tell me something. No. Oh, Mark wanted to ask a question? I'm going to ask, well, when you're done. Okay, okay. Um, it depends what you're doing, I think. Um... I'm not a singer. I'm not a, a dancer. I'm not. So I'm going to need those backup dancers to dance for me. So the that's ch- child think. actors. Yeah, I will need <laughs> child actors. You know what I mean? So that's where it lays. You got to get some fake IDs for those child actors yeah. to get them into the, yeah. this uh, bar gig soon. Yeah. Uh, from I- Dara Hughes says, love from Ireland. Hi, how are and, you? And he says, how did she feel, how did you feel about the Bianca Del Rio makeup comparisons that started once... The cast was revealed. Every year when the girls, the new cast of girls are announced, our promo shots go out, everybody starts comparing your makeup, your look, your your face, your aesthetic to previous Drag Race contestants. And if you actually look at our, our, our makeup, me and Bianca's, our, we wear big lashes, yes, and but our lashes are actually very different. Our makeup are very different. The way that we draw our eyebrows and the way we contour our face it's very different actually it's just the fact that we have big lashes mm-hmm. and we smile enough photos people think we look uh. the same you know what I mean I even get compared to Gia Gunn Gia Gunn absolutely kimchi um Jiggly Caliente Manila Luzon Angina you know what I mean so anybody who's Asian is going to be in the yeah, same yeah I was category. getting to that point but yeah, I get compared was... to Manila Luzon too how people saw me on drag and they're like you look just like Manila Luzon I'm like you really? You know, you see, that's the thing. People compare you to people that they that they that they know that they know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like when the when, drag queen who they see first, they yes. invented it. Yes, and you're like, oh, honey, I've been in drag for twenty years. I yes, or when when Nicki Minaj came out, you're like, oh my god, we you're you you look and you and your music sounds like Trina. You know what I mean? Or mm-hmm. Little Kim? Or they just people always compare. Mm-hmm. And it's you know it's there's something about being compared. Like nobody. Even when it's comparison to somebody who's really great, you still kind of resent a little bit because everybody wants to be unique and appreciated for their own talents. So, like to drag queens, it's like it's kind of like one of the most the rudest thing you can do is compare them. Sure, compare me to Bianca all you want. Just pay me her booking fee. You know, <laughs> I get paid one dollar. <laughs> Bianca bucks, honey. Trademark. Yeah. Yes, girl. Yes. Uh, you have a lot of merch now. Uh, yes. Uh, it, it, and right now, I don't know if you guys can see it in the video, but. 
Like uh, Cooking with Drag Queens merch is sitting on the floor of the living room right yes. there. And I have to go to work after and help them unpack. Oh. <laughs> thank, you for your, thank you for your efforts. Oh. Uh, what are you, uh, how are you managing all this? Because every drag queen does it differently. I know that like Bob the Drag Queen just kept his old apartment and uses it as a storage locker. Uh what about you? Like, uh, I use my apartment as a storage apartment. locker, no. but you're living in it too. But I'm living at the same time too. But it's pretty decent size, I would okay. say. I mean, at this point, I'm just sleeping there. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm barely even home. You know what I mean? So I'm just sleeping there. So my merch is over there. I just, whenever put, somebody puts an order, I put it, shove it in the envelope myself. I lick the envelope myself. I handwrite the envelope oh, myself. I do everything saliva. myself. Yes, I tell them if you want my saliva, you want to clone me, order my merch. <laughs> And they can kind of kiss you by kissing the envelope. Exactly. They have to kiss the, like, the envelope again. Uh, Bri- sure. I want to do this one. Uh, Brian Sweeney wants to Hi, know. Hi, Brian. <laughs> who would you want to have most sex with, Mark or Fausto? <laughs> he asked this question just to start a fight. Do, do you guys know this guy? Yeah, we do. Okay. He's he a guest a, on our show. Can, I, can I pick guests. both? Is it okay? <laughs> I'm very, well, Brian, I'm very well, single. I'm very, very single. Brian also put himself into the mix. I'm very single. I'm yeah. desperate. I'm horny. <laughs> you want to... You have a, you want to have Brian. He's he's one of the f- funnier and more more appealing of people who does this show on a regular basis. <laughs> he's he's, al- he's also straight, so you have to do full on fish. Is he him. is he really straight? Yeah. He's Can real I see straight. A picture of him? Yeah, he's a straight brother. Uh, Mark, are you pull out sure. your phone. Uh, Kyle Coffin says, "Hey, what is some advice you have for brand new baby queens that are trying to bust into the scene? I'm doing my third show tonight in St. Louis, quenching everyone's thirst. What, what's her name? Her name is Kyle Coffin. Hi, Kyle. Um, just be yourself, honestly. Just be yourself. It is so easy. I mean, you hear all the time. Just be yourself because it's easy. It's comfortable. You know yourself the best. Nobody else does but you. Just be yourself." Whatever your 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 talent and strengths are, just do it because someone else might be a good dancer and you try to dance like them and you're not a dancer, it's not gonna work. You know, just find your own strengths and go from there. That's, that's Brian. Brian Sweeney. So oh, he's cute. Yeah. Yeah, where where is he? He's like a tall di- like Irish guy. What is it? Do you like diabetes? A do you like pumping guys full of insulin? <laughs> <laughs> one time, one time works. <laughs> uh, Christopher Ramos. Hi, Christopher. I would love to see you on Cooking with Drag Queens. We I don't like know to how to cook, well. but apparently they're going to teach me how to cook. What? What are you? What's like your your favorite food to reheat? <laughs> water. I boil water. Um, I order takeout, so. What's it like your your comfort food? Um, Thai food, I would say, because if you try mm. to reheat a burger or fries or onion rings, it doesn't taste the same. Mm. But if it's Thai food or Chinese food, if you reheat it, it'll still taste the same. There's a huge controversy with Chinese food, especially Chinese Americans, that they feel like stuff like Panda Express is a bastardization of their culture. And they're very offended that most Americans, when they think of Chinese food, they feel is very unauthentic. And a lot of Mexicans have this uh, same feeling about Tex-Mex cuisine. Or Chipotle, right? Yeah, Chipotle, uh, yeah. Um, I don't have any feelings for it, actually, because I don't eat it. Um, you think it's, uh, do you like Panda Express? Have you eaten it? I, ate, I tried it before. I didn't, I, I didn't like it. Orange but. chicken? It's not, uh, we just ate there yesterday. I, 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 I yeah. love Panda I, Express. Well, what's something your mother would try and get you to eat as a little kid that you were just like, I am not eating that? Everything. Yeah. Uh, you know, we grew up eating you think, I mean... Lizards, snakes? Snakes, yes. Frogs, Chicken feet. Yes. Chicken feet, yes. Turtles, yes. Um, what else? Um, what does a turtle taste like? Like meat. <laughs> meat. Um, which is why I'm, I, I don't eat meat anymore. Because uh, I, I, grew vegan. Up, I grew up watching um, those animals get killed. While growing up, because while we were in China, she was just slaughtering them. Me and my dad. Have you seen those videos where they have the octopus and they pour the soy sauce and the octopus goes Rah! crazy? But I can imagine. I've seen seen some with squids. Yes. Yes. And I'm like, I guess it's a reaction to the salt in the in the because they're already dead. They're already dead. They're just muscles are reacting mm-hmm. to it. Yeah, it's burning sensation. And I'm like, oh, oh my Jesus. god, it sounds like a CD. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so your comfort food is like if you're gonna is pad thai or is it uh you know you're proper king or do you like a um anything Thai? Yeah. yeah so you're a thai. thai at heart. Yeah, I like Korean her. food too, but it's so expensive Korean food. Really? You don't think so? I, no. Well, I, you're I, a bougie, so <laughs> no, no. We, we there is a Korean barbecue near our place that's open late, and when we go there, as soon as we're done, we're like, damn, that was expensive. Yeah, yeah Korean food is expensive. You know, whereas yeah. like I. I'm all about cooking at home, you know, and certainly like uh, Asian food. I think, 
and a lot of people don't realize is that there's so much history in Asian food, especially like if you just look at the history of soy sauce, for example, um, that it's taking you know thousands and thousands of years to develop this one ingredient, and there's just a wisdom of time that is put into every recipe that you know some of the most sophisticated, some of the most complex flavors that we get in the world come from Asian countries. Exactly. Soy sauce used to be a delicacy. Now you can buy in the store for a dollar, two dollars, but before yeah. only rich people had access. I throw soy bags sauce. of it out because I'm just like, this soy sauce is sitting there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Now, one of the <laughs> controversial <laughs> things with vegetarians is fish sauce and Thai food. Uh, How do you feel about that? I still eat it. So you're mostly vegetarian then? I'm pescatarian. 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 I'll eat fish. I'll eat uh, seafood. I'll have shrimp. I'll sushi? Have... Yes. Love oh. sushi. Yeah. We've but been you, getting you into rolling our own sushi. What'd you say? We've been getting into eating our own sushi at home. Yeah. Salmon. We just buy the salmon and we slice it and make it at home. And it's actually like, what for what you would spend like 80 or or $100, you spend like $20. For like three pieces, right? Yeah. yeah. For like three freaking pieces. And we eat like kings. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like, making sushi at home is one of the best things. I really want to get you back into the to the kitchen. I would love to. You see that? That's the kitchen right behind you. It's. I know it doesn't look much when you're like streaming on an iPhone, <laughs> but we uh, make it look good. Ma- Mickey Allen Hampton asked. Mani- Hi, Mickey. Manila got a lot of flack from the girls on her season when she used a stereotypical accent for a challenge. Would you find it offensive, or would you do the same for a challenge? I don't find it offensive because she's Asian herself. Mm-hmm. It's not like she's a, another race okay. and she's making fun of the Asian culture. If she's Asian, do it. Mm-hmm. Don't let other people decide for you what's racist for you when they're not your race. Mm-hmm. Brandon Ballone, also known as Hi, Brandon. Uh, Gisabella. Hi, Gisabella. Uh, from, oh, I know that bitch. She's yeah, from, she's, from New York. She's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, from season 10, did any of the queens hit you up to make them costumes before filming? Yes. Because um, you're good cause sewing. You're, you're good, yes. Because for years you've been making costumes for girls yes. in New York City. Um, Monet Exchange had to... F- Fix some some of her stuff. I had to fix uh, before going into um, filming. Uh, Cracker. She asked me. I told her. Uh, Sorry, I'm swamped with other projects. I cannot finish. And if I do yours. Just, and so she give you that look like you got on too. No, she did. She didn't know. <laughs> she did not know until she walked in. Okay. Dusty Ray Bottoms. I was making stuff for her, but I didn't tell her. I didn't tell anybody. Nobody knew until I walked in the room, and they were like, <gasps> and "Oh when you were making my stuff, god!" You were like, "I bet this is for Drag Race," and you're like, "Let me fuck this up real bad." <laughs> I, I did not actually. I was I was a fair competitor, and I knew yeah. they were on. I they were just not telling me because yeah, you can tell. I, I know the stuff that we were supposed to bring, and they were exactly having me fix mm-hmm. or make stuff. For them that were exactly the same list that I got. You had a really good excuse. You what? said you were in a coma. Yes. <laughs> I did. I did. It was a play off of, um, because you're not supposed to tell anybody that you're yeah. leaving for production. So it wasn't until I was on the plane, I was flying to LA, I, I sent a text to all my employers and said, hi, my, my grandpa died. I'm going back to China now. I'm sorry. So when I came back, people were like, oh, she's... She was filming this and this and that. She wasn't even in China. So I I said, let me play off of the fact that I was in China. Okay, fine. I wasn't in... Yeah, I was in China because I got into a coma. So that's where I came out. Really? Did anyone believe you you were in a coma? People that don't watch Drag Race and don't understand that Drag Race is filmed around that time, yes. They believed it and they sent me messages and said, are you okay? Are you you fine? How are you? What happened? Everything Mm. okay? But people that watch the show Mm -hmm. and it's a fan of RuPaul's Drag Race, they know what's going on. They just (laughs) laugh about it. Yeah. It's like, you should have just told people you're you're visiting your grandma in Korea like (laughs) Kim Chi did. Oh, God. Um, Sasha Kills, who's a Parisian drag queen. Hi, Sasha. Writes, how do you feel about the lack of drag queens of Asian descent on the scene? Do you think there's a particular reason for this? And are there any Asian drag queens you want to give a shout out to? Okay, that was a lot of questions. Yeah. Break it down for me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, how why do you feel about yeah. like there not being that many Asian drag queens, and why do you think that might be? Um, or do you feel like there's a lack of Asian drag queens? Yes, I think I think there is a lack of Asian drag queens because <laughs> doing drag. Not everybody just wakes up and say, "I'm gonna do drag." Mm-hmm. It takes a lot of balls, I think, to do drag. To wear mm-hmm. a pair of heels. Make up and walk out on the street, I think. Walking up, uh, being of a d- different gender and representing that. So I think in Asian culture, we're so, um, we're, we're taught to be obedient that we, we don't have the opportunity to be a rebel and break out of our shell. And, th- and I think that's why it's, um, 
it's so you such feel like it's, less it's, it's much there. It's coming from inside their own community as, yes, as much uh, as yes, outside. Yes, you're putting it a better worse than I am. Yes, I think that's what's going on. And so it's it's part of that, like because your family's so important to you. There's a lot of expectations placed upon you. Yes. And being a drag queen is all about sort of breaking that mold. Yes. And also even being gay. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the first step. And then you have to become a drag queen. That's double elimination. (laughs) (laughs) The sachet away for um, both those reasons. Yeah. Do you feel like uh, at some point in time you're going to sit your family down and say, Mom, Dad, I'm a beautiful woman. And I'm on RuPaul's Drag Race season 10. Do they know Uh, you're on TV? No. My sister knows. Yeah. My sister knows. Yeah. Will I ever sit them down? I don't know. Yeah, it's, depends it's a... if the time is right because everybody's journey is different. Everybody's mm-hmm. family handles it differently. Do you think so. your sister might tell them? I don't think so. It, no. I mean, she's known for years. So okay. She hasn't said a word. Maybe the maybe rephrase the question. Do you think your parents want to know? I don't think they want to know. That's why yeah. I'm not telling them. I'd rather not. Have them know, then let them know and be sad about it. And just keep peace in your home, you know, yeah. too. It's like... And have peace and harmony and yeah. goodwill and bring and, honor. And luck. Yes. <laughs> and waving cats. <laughs> so tonight in Chicago, uh, for people that are watching this on the live feed, you're performing at Roscoe's? Are you, yes, are I you, am. Are you with some of the other girls? Or are, yes, I am. You? It's me and Dusty Ray Bottoms. Awesome. Yeah, my sister from New York City, Dusty Ray Bottoms. You guys going to do an exorcist on stage? Yes. I, Exorcism? <laughs> yes, yes. We joked yesterday. Bring the gay back in. Yes. We joked yesterday. She said she learned how to do a death drop um, uh, 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 not too long ago, and she passed out for 20 minutes. And, and, people, and people were saying, do a death drop, do a death drop. She, she said, come tomorrow to Roscoe's and see me do that drop during my performance and I said I jumped in I said I'll make sure she passes out for 20 minutes I'll hit her in the head I'll put her in a coma too <laughs> did she Did she actually like pass she hit she, her head that's and what she said she had a concussion yeah. she had a, she, that's what she said she passed out for 20 minutes wow these death drops are so dangerous uh, mm-hmm. Shangela uh, broke her knee broke her mm-hmm. knee yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah can you do a death drop no I'll t- after we're done we'll uh, you can teach me it. yeah, okay. and I, yeah. <laughs> you better teach me live on video so people know that's actually you, so you want to do it, we can do it right now do you okay, want to do it okay. okay do you really know how to do it yeah. i mean kind of <laughs> we're gonna uh, we're gonna show that uh, do you want to show that right now Why not? okay <laughs> okay guys uh, well we we want to th- we want to thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast <laughs> let's end the podcast and then okay. we'll do the the okay. death drop and this is a you can watch the death drop tutorial uh, Mark shows you hua, hua, you hua, you hua. Still learning how to do it. Don't worry, your RuPaul doesn't know my name either. <laughs> I want to remind folks we can't do this podcast without your support. So if you're not a Plus member yet, sign up today at feastoffun.com/slash/plus because your contribution to the show is what makes this show happen. We wouldn't be able to have fabulous guests like you, huh? Like I know. Weren't for you. You. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> honey. Remember, we have a fantastic t shirt uh, and one shirt that uh, you can get glittery t shirts of Cooking with Drag Queens, Feast of Fun, and my favorite, I'm Not an Evil Queen, I Just Got a Bad Edit. Available <laughs> on our store, feastoffun.com slash store. <laughs> That's like the RuPaul giggle in the. Okay, so let's. Uh, okay, so we're going to do this. This is what we're going to do. Okay, so we're unplugging here, but we're going to show people still at home what's going on. Are you guys recording? Yeah, we're still filming. Are we still live? Yes, girl. Oh, my. Come on up. Here, I'll put this here because she wanted to 30 pounds. No, you're not, girl. I'm a big girl. So uh, why don't you guys tell the, the, the folks at home who are watching. Hi, so Misunderstood. <laughs> misunderstood. Is Misunderstood watching? Yeah. Oh, There's dogs. Okay, she, she sent me a text yesterday. What'd she say? She said, suck my motherfucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> and I told her, no, I'm on Drag Race now. I'm sucking RuPaul's dick now. You're like, all two inches? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I so what, okay. what did she so need to know? I, I learned two different ways. One from uh, a little girl on YouTube, and she said, you just kind of slide this foot out, and then you come back like this, right? Uh, let's move these up. chairs out of the way. So you might end up in 20 minutes. They <laughs> don't bust their heads. Let's get this out of the way. Let's as much space as you can. I don't but want. I, also, I don't want like uh, RuPaul suing me because we, you know, accidentally Yuhua busted her head and went to another coma. <laughs> and so I also learned. I took a dance class at the Austin International Drag Festival with um, with uh, Laganja, and she said when you do a death drop is as this foot comes. Up, the head goes back, and then this turns out. Say what? I know. So let me watch you do it first. 
<laughs> and so the other thing too but is like, that in the frame it's so very we can important see, yeah. like when you fall like anytime you try and fall it's like you don't want to fall down you want to always have your hand down right so that this is this is what's bracing your 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 fall okay and so this is going to turn out when you come down right so then you're dancing around you're doing your thing and then you uh, like that <laughs> and then you gotta pop back up <laughs> Did you just hit her with your head? Did I? No, 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 oh, no, okay. no, 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 I was more worried for you. Well, just do the, do this action. See if you can do that. This. And if you just don't do feel comfortable doing this, you don't yeah, need to don't. do this. I'll do, I'll do just hand going back. <laughs> and then kind of go back, bend the knee. Which knee? The, uh, this knee. The right knee. And then this leg is coming back. This head's going back. And this is coming forward. So Mark's got you. Here, I'm gonna Why don't you just hold her? Yeah, there you go. There you go. Now see, make sure you brace yourself with this one. Okay, and then you <laughs> Oh my god! She's really dead! I, I did it. <laughs> Coma section. Rest in peace. <laughs> Miss Hamasaki. Oh, that felt very comfortable on the floor. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Can I have a Thank hug? Yes, of course. Thank okay. you so much. We'll practice with a mat. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.